Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello good morning and welcome to uh, the first lecture of the online course introduction to interaction design. I am Dr. Sonal Atre, assistant professor in the department of design at IIT Roorkee and I will be uh, the course uh, instructor. When we think of interaction, so we think of communication and human beings have the innate uh, requirement of communication. So, there are many other species as well who communicate, but probably human beings are the only species which have developed. Uh, the interactions and communication to such a degree that today we can communicate with somebody sitting on the other uh, end of the globe as well. So, uh, similarly we also interact with a lot of products on a daily basis and we will in this course try to understand that how can we design better interactive products for the users. So, we will take an example from our daily life when we uh, come in contact with the hundreds of products and some of them are designed by uh, craftsmen, some by designers, some by engineers and they all serve very different purposes. But we enjoy interacting or using some of these products and some of these products uh, do not really appeal too much uh, to us. So, one of the reasons for that is that whether uh, we feel connected to the products or not, whether they are uh, desirable uh, from that point of view for us. Now, let us uh, try to understand that when we say that uh, we need to uh, improve the interaction of the product, what it means in the physical uh, realm of products or the tangible products uh, that we say. So, here we can see that this man has been given a task to break the stones into smaller pieces. So, now when we say interaction, we will probably think of uh, the axe that he is using, but there are several other factors and we have to look at the holistic uh, picture uh, in order to determine that uh, uh, how the, the interaction can be improved. So, we can see that he the first uh, probably uh, the step would be to see whether he is uh, healthy, uh, his body is healthy and he is not suffering from any uh, major ailments. Another is his environment where he is working, whether it is conducive to his work, uh, especially when one is working in the outside uh, environment what is the weather condition like. Third is of course, the tool that he is using in this particular case, the hammer and then the length of the hammer, the weight of the hammer, uh, how precise uh, it is, it will all affect the outcome of this man and finally, the cognitive process of this man. So, what is going on in his mind? Is he worried about something? Is he uh, thinking of uh, some other uh, thing while he is uh, working here. So, all of those things need to be considered in order to design a better uh, system overall for us to uh, be able to improve uh, the outcome of this exercise. So, similarly we can see uh, in the area of digital communication. Now, if this is a uh, website that I am browsing to purchase for example, a bicycle. So, you can see that how the information has been spread really haphazardly on the website and it will probably be very challenging for me to uh, locate, identify a particular bicycle. And on top of that, if I need to uh, you know compare it with some other bicycles or uh, check its features, I may have to spend a lot of time figuring out where to uh, locate you know that particular button icon, so that I can continue uh, researching or further uh, exploring this particular product. Now, a view that we took of the previous uh, example where the man was breaking the stones. So, some of those points uh, probably will not be applicable in the same sense as it was in the previous example, but here also what will be more important is that how easily one can identify the items that they are trying to find and also uh, what kind of a cognitive load is being subjected. So, here it means that how difficult or easy would it be for one to uh, uh, you know uh, achieve the aim that they initially intended uh, to achieve. So, 
uh, what is uh, interaction and why uh, does it matter uh, in design? So, interaction design is a multidisciplinary field that uh, uh, focuses on design of interactions uh, for human use with the computers and over time uh, human computer interaction or HCI has expanded not uh, just from the computers, but now to the overall information uh, uh, technology area. So, it has uh, sort of embedded itself into our lives and it becomes important uh, to ask that how will this uh, interaction be improved or we can also say that how do we optimize the user's interaction with a system or a interactive product. So, there are uh, several uh, ways to do it. Now, first we need to uh, know that how people act and react uh, you know uh, during some events. So, uh, like we saw the earlier example that we like some products, we dislike some products. So, what is it that uh, makes a person react to something positively or negatively? So, what are those attributes uh, that will make me want to use the product again or make me want to you know uh, just uh, reject the product. The second point is that what are people good and bad at. So, we all have our um, strengths and weaknesses. So, how can this interaction that we are designing, how can that enhance the strengths and how can it also help one to overcome the weaknesses. So, the weak areas can also be strengthened. And finally, is getting people involved in the design. So, of course, uh, without people, without their uh, input, this whole exercise would be incomplete. So, we need to uh, involve them uh, from the initial stage, so that we are able to identify the problems, so that we can come up with possible solutions. Now, a uh, goal of uh, uh, interaction design, we can say is that uh, ultimately, we want to create very engaging, immersive user experience for the users. And for that to happen, we want to and we need to understand that how emotions work. So, we all are uh, emotional uh, people. So, we are, uh, we feel uh, affectionate towards our family, our friends, our pets. We also feel emotionally attached to even some inanimate objects. So, they may be lifeless objects, but they still may hold a lot of uh, emotional value that we cannot get rid of them. For example, a grandfather's watch or a chair. So, we can see that even products can bring out that feeling in us. And these feelings of emotion have uh, many um, ways that we bond with them. Few of them are that uh, the product is aesthetically pleasing. So, whether it is visually pleasing. So, uh, whether if it is visually pleasing, it will make the product probably more desirable for us to use. So, here for example, we can see on the uh, screen that there is uh, this juicer by LSE and it may not be the most functional or utilitarian product, but it is very aesthetically pleasing and that uh, really people enjoy purchasing and keeping it uh, you know on display. And similarly, this uh, website uh, next to it is a very simple minimalistic clean website where one can easily identify and find uh, their way around and uh, it makes their work uh, very uh, simple and uh, they probably would want to go back to this website because it saves their time and it is very efficient. And also how the uh, product, uh, what is its story, how does it fit into the human experience because we all have a story and if the product can speak uh, to us in, in the language we understand, then it makes a very good bond between the two of us. It could be a digital or a, a physical product. And finally, we also cannot ignore the business side of it. How will it be uh, marketed? How will it be manufactured? Uh, which particular process we will be using uh, to design it? Will it fail? Uh, how can we ensure it does not fail? So, all those things are also important. How can we ensure it reaches a lot of people? It, uh, it is accepted by a lot of people. So, all those uh, are also goals of interaction design. So, when we think of a good interactive product, so many uh, uh, you know companies and products probably come to our mind. So, one of them is uh, Apple and Apple is uh, known to come up with uh, products that are aesthetic, 
uh, that is visually pleasing and they are also very functional. And uh, at the same time, uh, the company also ensures to uh, offer a very uh, positive experience to the users as we can see in the image that uh, at the store, Apple store, uh, the users are exploring the product, they are checking out the functions and uh, they, uh, they are free to play around with uh, the products. So, it will also help them uh, identify the best uh, product for them that which one will best work for their uh, requirement. And uh, similarly, we can see that how Apple also caters to people from all uh, types of preferences and uh, the iPod on the right, we can see that how many different color variants are available that people with uh, different personalities or different preferences can uh, pick one for themselves. So, uh, who is involved in interaction design? So, who are those people who uh, come up with these interactive products and services? Now, this is of course, not a one man jo uh, job, it will be a uh, teamwork and depending on the problem, the, the size of the problem, the uh, domain of the problem, so the team members will vary. So, for example, if uh, we are working uh, to design a healthcare application, so in that case, uh, we will need a graphic and interaction uh, designer, uh, software engineers for coding and uh, maybe some uh, AI experts who can uh, design an app which can predict certain things. Um, then we will need healthcare professionals who can guide that uh, what needs to be uh, solved, uh, what needs to be found out, what could be the solution and so on. And also uh, somebody from the background of ergonomics, if we are dealing with say a physical uh, you know issue or a physical health related product application. Now, uh, what is uh, human computer uh, interaction? So, uh, like we have discussed that human computer interaction is uh, how we can design better interactive products for the user or the consumer, the man, uh, so that uh, he is able to communicate effectively with the um, computer. And there are several um, ways in which HCI can improve the, these interactions that uh, humans will have with the uh, product. So, HCI can increase the efficiency by uh, enabling you know very intuitive and uh, simple ways of communication between the computer and the human. So, this will also save time and uh, it will also um, so resulting in a very efficient uh, uh, output or productive output. HCI also uh, uh, enhances the user satisfaction. So, when we create you know immersive and engaging uh, scenarios or uh, you know uh, situations for people where they sort of you know maybe lose uh, time they forget how much time they have spent so that will uh, provide happiness and that will ensure that uh, we have a loyal customer loyal consumer and he will come back maybe for another product also in the future hci also can support accessibility to ensure that the product has a wider reach that a lot of people from all walks of life are able to benefit from it and especially uh, people with impairments and also people who have maybe uh, some uh, you know where they need some help with their technical skills. HCI also um, can uh, help in safety uh, by ensuring that the, um, the instructions that are given. Uh, to the user through the uh, interface. So, they are very clear and simple and uh, so that there is less chance of making any type of an error by the person who is using it. And uh, finally, HCI also drives uh, innovation by ensuring that we come up with more uh, technologically enhanced uh, products which will help uh, improve this interaction. So, we can see that how uh, human computer interaction has a big role to play uh, in our lives and uh, uh, designers are uh, constantly striving to come up with uh, better improved uh, interactions. Um, so, let us take a quick look at a uh, little bit of the history of uh, interaction design. So, the first computer uh, was the ENIAC which is the electronic numerical integrator and computer. 
So, this was developed during the second world war and it was uh, ready uh, by 1945 and this was a very uh, large computer. So, it took uh, a huge space and a, a lot of power was required to uh, uh, you know to uh, to power it up and um, it was not uh, similar to of course, the computers that we have today where we program them in a certain way, but this particular one had to be programmed using the uh, plug boards. So, it was a, a manual you know uh, communication with the uh, device wherein uh, if a new task had to be undertaken then it would take maybe several hours or it could also take days because it was kind of a tedious task. Now, the purpose of uh, ENIAC uh, mainly was in the area of ballistics. So, uh, since the world war uh, was going on, so there was a need to find the trajectory of the uh, various weapons because the trajectory is determined by many factors like uh, wind speed and uh, environmental factors. So, this exercise till now was being done manually and tables were uh, being made by hand. So, now this uh, computer really helped them come up with the uh, ballistic uh, tables very, very quickly. So, it made the whole system very fast. Second world war was actually also uh, in a way quite uh, uh, helpful in uh, introducing us to uh, you know interaction design, because when the war was going on a lot of uh, focus came on to the uh, human being on the on the person, because all these machines were now operated by uh, human beings, they were not automatic at that time. Then certain kind of training was required to operate the uh, these uh, highly complex at that time uh, weaponry. And uh, now, uh, cognition also became important, because a person is handling a, a very tough uh, equipment and how much uh, cognitive load is on, on his mind like we discussed in the earlier example. So, all of these led to uh, later on the refinement of these products and development of control panels and other complex uh, machines and uh, uh, military equipment. And the human computer interaction uh, this particular term became uh, popular only in the 1980s, but uh, we can see that how uh, this uh, research or this area had uh, you know was being explored from quite early on. Now, Ivan uh, Sadar uh, Land is uh, considered to be the uh, creator of uh, 3D uh, AutoCAD uh, graphical interface and uh, he is the one who uh, sort of gave us an insight into the area such as visual simulation and also virtual reality which is quite uh, common uh, nowadays. And his PhD was on uh, the area of sketch pad, wherein uh, the commands that were given to the computer could now be given by sketching on this sketch pad. And this made this work very easy, uh, then there were many other applications of it as well, wherein for uh, uh, you know electrical uh, connections, some mechanical parts this particular technology was used, because this also helped understand the linkages and other connections very easily with the help of uh, the light pen that was used to write on the sketch pad. And it was very also very easy to now sketch and maybe delete things, because uh, if everything is done manually then of course, erasing it or then starting from scratch takes a lot of time, but here it made the process very, very quick. So, he is he's one of the major uh, pioneers of this area. So, if we see the evolution of uh, uh, interaction design, so of course, technology has had to um, you know a, a big contribution of technology because of which uh, now we have so many interactive products, but we can see that uh, initially uh, we had a batch age. So, batch age was when the command was communicated as a batch and there was then no uh, interaction between the human and the system and then the, uh, the response was received. 
Then later as we progressed in the timeline, we came to command line interaction age. Uh, this was the age when a, a command prompt was given to the system and the system would respond and then uh, the person would again give a command and so on and so forth. Next came the graphical user interface. So, now we were uh, interacting with uh, some kind of a graphical interface and here like for example, clicking the mouse and how long it takes to uh, give the feedback, how slow is it. Uh, so, the minute I click will it instantly uh, uh, you know work on the command or will it take some time, some lag will be there. So, this was the time when the graphical interfaces were uh, uh, used. Next we had the uh, uh, internet age. In, in fact, uh, uh, we are living in that internet age and uh, thanks to the internet we all are uh, connected and we are uh, progressing quite uh, quickly because uh, now we are able to uh, connect with a lot of people, lot of services and it is helping out the society, society in a big way. And here it allowed uh, us to you know sort of uh, interact with system in a more uh, a positive manner. It allowed us to, um, to be mobile and also uh, get more immersive experiences. Uh, in the interaction age uh, which was around 2019 onwards, here there was a lot of more focus on interactive products and interaction between humans and computers and uh, AR, VR, uh, all these technologies uh, came up and uh, uh, in order to provide us all with a, a better uh, experience. And finally, the, the AI or artificial intelligence age wherein now we have all these uh, you know uh, artificial intelligence languages like deep learning and uh, machine learning. So, which sort of are an extension of the human. So, they can take over some of the work that the human is uh, doing. So, uh, uh, so that is the uh, present and the future. Now, if we see the uh, advancements in the human computer interaction since uh, 1960. So, we can see that uh, in the beginning 1950s to 90. Uh, uh, probably 70s, 80s, it was the mainframe era. Now, in this mainframe era, the uh, uh, computer systems were quite huge, quite large and they used to occupy a lot of uh, space like we saw the ENIAC earlier and they were generally a central facility in an institute and they were not on any uh, network. So, uh, multiple users would come and uh, use it in their time slots and this was generally used for purposes like uh, inventory uh, preparation or uh, uh, payroll calculations. So, it was very powerful, but uh, individuals could not own uh, you know one uh, system each. But in 1980s, it became possible when we had the personal computer era and uh, now the computers were very affordable and they were uh, uh, the interface was very very user friendly. So, this allowed people to do their work more efficiently. We also had many softwares that came up during this time like for example, uh, word excel that we uh, use nowadays which helped or maybe their versions which helped uh, compute uh, large problems easily and make uh, uh, you know the lives uh, simpler. Then uh, in 2000s, uh, we saw the mobility era or the mobile era wherein with the advent of uh, internet, now almost everybody had a mobile phone in their hands. So, we did not have to be attached to uh, the cord in order to use uh, internet, but now we could uh, move around, uh, we, we had GPS, uh, we can find locations easily you know we can be somewhere on time and so on. Also a lot of wearable technologies also came along like health watches and uh, other things uh, fall detect fall detectors uh, to see whether elderly uh, may fall and if they would need some medical assistance. So, this uh, is currently the life we are living and then is the uh, ubiquitous uh, era. In this era it is 
the era of uh, IoT, Internet of Things, how now we are not just connected with each other, but we are also our, even our homes are connected uh, with our cell phone. We can control uh, you know our uh, fans, lights even when we are not around and not just our homes, but also large infrastructures like even uh, smart cities or intelligent transportation systems. So, they all are now connected and they are uh, uh, we are moving uh, leaps and bounds in terms of the advancement in the interaction that we are uh, seeing around us. So, if we see a uh, simple example, here we can see the evolution of uh, interaction in telephone devices and we can see how uh, initially uh, the telephones were, uh, they came equipped with the rotatory dial and uh, later of course, identifying the problem of uh, ch or challenges that what if you miss a number or dial a wrong number, then you have to repeat the exercise again or many other problems probably. Then we had the touch tone uh, telephone, which was later replaced by the cordless uh, telephone, which allowed people to now move around while they uh, talked. And also mobile telephones now where on the screen we could see who is calling us, so a caller ID. And this also was a very accessible uh, product, the cordless phone as well as the mobile technology that now people, uh, maybe somebody in a wheelchair or, or somebody who is unable to uh, uh, climb up the steps, now they can also use the phone. And uh, finally, the telephones with touch interactive uh, uh, screens where now we do not even need to press the button or dial in order to call somebody. We can also see that uh, another product that we use quite often is the remote control in our homes and we can see that how over the times even remote control has really changed. Uh, its um, its shape and uh, the way it performs and that has made it a very utility uh, oriented product. So, in the beginning the uh, remote, uh, earlier probably there were no remotes when we had black and white TVs. So, we had to, I am giving the example of TV, but it is applicable in maybe other devices as well. So, wherein we had to physically operate the TV, but then came the remotes with uh, which had wires. So, they were little bit more cumbersome and then we had the IR uh, technology, infrared technology with the help of which from a distance we could uh, uh, you know operate the remote. And uh, however, uh, very less thought was given on how the uh, buttons are organized, uh, what is the color uh, that has been given to them, how close or at what distance are they placed from each other. So, uh, that was also uh, getting refined slowly alongside. And then we came with the radio uh, frequency uh, remote controls, now they were even better at their performance. And finally, now we can see that we do not even need to press a button in order to operate uh, something, we can actually uh, through our voice, we can turn on, turn off TV or give any command. Uh, there is also a gesture that allows people to um, give commands with their gesture. And uh, uh, we also have now Alexa and uh, all these other voice operated services, which uh, uh, you know really uh, help people who uh, uh, for them it is easier to give a voice based command, it is faster as well. So, today we uh, saw that a little bit of the background of interaction design, what is the role of uh, the design team and a little bit about how it started, what prompted the HCI as we see it now. And uh, so, uh, we will stop here today and in the next lecture, we will continue discussing some of these uh, topics further. We will see some of the pioneers of the area of uh, design and we will continue uh, this discussion. So, I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thank you.